In the previous video, we created a form so that we could gather student email information that would eventually then go into our Google Contacts. But how do we export the contacts or import them into the Google Contacts uh, page? Well, let's take a look at what we have. Uh, here we have the spreadsheet, Mr. Lenhart's student contacts that was created when we created the form. This is the resulting spreadsheet. I'm going to open that up. Now I've had this posted on a website or I, I had, you know, a, uh, had the URL written on the board, but I had my students go ahead and fill this in. And so uh, we have, I have two periods, uh, partial periods filled in right now. And these are, how do I get these into my contact form? Okay, well, first thing we're going to do is the contacts import CSV files. Well, CSV is pretty common with spreadsheets. If we go to the Google spreadsheet we've created and I open File, if I scroll down, I'll see Download As. And it gives me options that I can use to download this particular sheet, or I can download right to Excel. Uh, OpenOffice, which is an uh, open source version of Office, and even to a PDF file. What I need to import into Google Contacts is a CSV file. So I'm going to choose Download as a CSV. Now, I'm on a Macintosh, so it's going to give me this little window, and I'll just choose Save File and say OK. Now, I have downloaded it. Let's go to the contacts form. I already have my contacts open, but remember, to get to the, your Google contacts, there is no link to it. You need to be already logged into your Google account, and then go to www.google.com slash contacts, and it will take you to the Google contacts page. Okay, here's my Google contacts page. I have my EdTech ITAF colleagues highlighted, so these are my uh, EdTech ITAFs uh, in my contact form. This is a, shows, again, the fields that Google uses for uh, its contacts. We're not going to use very many of them, but uh, you'll see what happens when we import. Now, right up here, up on the upper uh, right-hand side, you'll see Import, Export, and Print. I'm going to choose Import says, do I want to stop editing? Yes, I'm, I'm still, to show you the, the uh, contact fields, I had to open a, a contact editing. So I chose import, and it says we support importing CSV files, and it talks all the different programs, uh, including their own, um, that, it, that it works with. It says, please select that file. I'm going to click on Browse to look on my desktop where I saved it. I'll go to Desktop, and there's Mr. Lenhart's con student contacts. So I click on that. Select Open. Now, this is very important. If I just import them now, they just get imported straight to the general contacts, and they're not grouped. So I have over 300 contacts in my contacts folder. I don't want them mixed in. Uh, it would take me a long time to sort that. So I'm going to click on Also Add These Imported Contacts To, and then use New Group. So I'm actually going to be asked for a group name. And I'll choose Import. Now, these are my students. So I'm just going to say uh, uh, 2009-10 students. This is for me. I need to name the list. Putting it as a number will put it up on the top of the list, which is kind of useful. And it tells me that these are the students from my 2009-2010 year. I'm going to say OK, and it tells me it uploaded 16 contacts, which is what I gave it, and I'll say OK, and let's go to 2009-2010 students, and here are my contacts. Now I have a number of contacts. I have Abe, Abe Lincoln here, uh, he's in, he, one of my students, it says he's in period one, I also have uh, Betty Ford in here. She's from my period two. And generally, if I, but notice, instead of seeing their emails, which are somewhat cryptic, much like the MyMail setup for our students, it, it copies the exact format, you can see where I, now I actually have the name. So if I need to share with Bill Clinton, 
I can just select Bill Clinton when I'm working with it later. I don't have to select WJC for William Jefferson Clinton and then this random number at mymail.com and remember that. I can actually just choose by name, which makes things a lot easier. So now I have a group, and if I wanted to, I could actually sort them now. I could create a group here, a Bill Clinton I have checked. I can actually just check the ones that I know. Well, let's start with Bill Clinton. I'm going to select a new group, and Bill Clinton is in period one, so I'm going to type period one as a kind of a subgroup. Okay. And that would be, uh, let's put uh, 2009, 10, period one. And I'll say OK. And you'll see Bill Clinton, because he was checked, is the only one now in the period one group. If I go back to the students that are in there, I can actually select a Blinken. And, and notice he's in period one and it says groups, and I can put him in the 2009-2010 period one, and then I can go and I know for a fact that uh, Dick Nixon is one of those ones that's in there. If I want to see it, I'll undo that, and I see he's in period one, so I can move him, and so on, so that I can control which groups the students are in. Now I have the ability of doing some things with the sharing tool that we'll do in the next video that will show you how we can make sharing uh, groups and subgroups and individuals much easier when working with Google Docs.